deepfake is a general term that encompasses synthesized content. That content can be text, it can be images, it can be audio, or it can be video. And it is synthesized by an AI or machine learning algorithm to, for example, create an article by a computer, just given a headline. Create an image of a person who doesn't exist. Synthesize an audio in another person's speech or make somebody say and do something in a video that they never said. This is basically how it works. There's two main components to it. There's a generator and a detector. The generator makes an image, hands it to the detector. The detector says, nope, this doesn't look like a person. Hands it back to the generator, modifies the image a little bit, back, and we loop over and over again. So think of a forger and somebody like me, a forensic scientist, working in parallel, and I'm helping that person make a better and better and better fake. That whole process, though, is being done in a computer with two systems, and these are so-called generative adversarial networks. Generative because they're generating something, adversarial because you've pitted these two systems against each other, and network because underneath the machinery of the generator and the detector is a so-called deep neural network. That's the synthesis part. It's essentially democratizing access to very sophisticated Hollywood level video special effects, but now we're gonna put it in the hands of the many to create some fun, entertaining things, but also you can very quickly see how that can also get weaponized. When we lack the ability to trust the visual imagery, the recording of events, we have a very difficult space that we are going to start to inhabit very quickly. And here's, in some ways, the real threat of deep fakes. It is the so-called liar's dividend. What happens when we enter a world where we can't believe anything? Anything can be fake. The news story, the image, the audio, the video. Well, in that world, nothing has to be real. Everybody has plausible deniability. This is a new type of security problem, which is sort of information security. How do we trust the information that we are seeing, and reading, and listening to on a daily basis? And it's a different type of insecurity because it's not about physically securing a device. It's about securing the reliability and the trustworthiness of the information that reaches our devices every day. And given how much time we are all spending online, that has become a real threat to societies and democracies. And these are not our abstract threats. These are big, huge security threats that we are going to be dealing with for decades to come. The question is, what do we do now? What's next? So first of all, we need regulation. And I say that reluctantly, but our regulators have to start getting smart about how to have modest regulation that will require the social media companies and the internet companies of the world to do better dealing with the harms that are coming from their services. Two, at a corporate level, we have to change the business model. What the algorithms that recommend content to you, whether that's on Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or YouTube or Google or wherever it is, have figured out that the most hateful, divisive, outrageous, conspiratorial information engages us. When you are in the pure engagement driving business, this is the inevitable outcome. Three, we need technology. We just need better technology. We have to invest. We protect copyright on content. We can do the same thing, but we have to innovate in this space. We have been developing technologies that can look at videos and audio and determine with a reasonable degree of certainty whether they have been deep faked or manipulated or not. Four is us. We have to change our behavior. We have to change our pattern and we have to become better digital citizens. If you are going to share something that seems particularly outrageous and particularly uh, unlikely, take the breath. This is really the best advice. So forget about trying to detect deep fakes. Forget about trying to be the fact checker. There are really, really smart and talented people out there doing it for you. You just have to find that information. Five years from now, we're gonna be talking about something other than deep fakes. There is going to be another threat in our online information ecosystem. And so we have to keep evolving our technologies and we have to try to think when we are putting safeguards in place, whether it's regulation or business models or technology, is not just dealing with today's problems, but dealing with tomorrow's problems where tomorrow may be unknown. Let's understand that technology is being weaponized against us as individuals, societies, and democracies, and let's do better for the next round.